Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. We have completed the next level of orbital rocketry, 1958 orbital rocketry. So we have our Gamma 2 that I was waiting for and we are going to use it. But before I do anything else, I'm going to start the mission control upgrade because it seems like it's going to take until December 5th. So that's quite a long time. And we might as well get that ready because we're going to get the tracking station upgrade with the lunar range communication research uh, coming up. And so that will also be under construction. I don't know if that's in parallel or not. We are upgrading ELA-2 because we're adding the propellant for the Gamma-2. And let's take a look at the rocket with the Gamma-2 stage on it and talk about what we're going to do with it. And we do have the Gamma 2 here. And it will need some more data. We have zero data units right now. And there's a large option later on. But it doesn't have all the upgrade options that the Agena would have. But we're going to stick with it because, well, uh, we're European. <laughs> so uh, we're going to go with a European option here. And oh, you know, whenever possible. And we have a satellite here, and the goal is to get more science from high Earth orbit. Now, last time we didn't get much science from high Earth orbit because we didn't have enough time to transmit it. And so this time I'm hoping to gather it, the, you know, long-term science, the cosmic ray science, magnetic scan, and micrometeorite detection. Gather those, and we'll use the solar panels to recharge. Uh, once again, uh, it says perpetual electric charge there. We'll... Uh, Make sure that the comms, okay, comms included, it says 0.026 per second. We produce 0.1 per second, which is a lot. It all depends on whether these uh, solar panels are going to work. Uh, we saw that the hex one seemed to work quite nicely, uh, but we don't know whether these are going to uh, come out with some degradation or not, or how much. Fortunately, I'm not expecting too much science out of this. We'll take a look at the tech tree and see what I'm aiming for. Uh, but we're just going to toss it up to high orbit and try and gather as much as possible. If it is perpetual, that'd be great. It'll, of course, the solar panels will degrade eventually. Uh, each of these panels is 40-ish uh, watts, which means that individually they should be able to power the whole thing. And these down here are not individually able to power the whole thing, but you know we don't want them it oriented so that they're the only ones dealing with it and then we've got the hex one on top which could also power the whole thing on its own and yep that's the idea and the gamma 2 doesn't require a high pressure tank so we've got better performance there we've got the upgraded cores and the satellite itself is one ton of course we don't have a control core on it we've just got a science core but that is what we are going to try to uh, unlock with our science, I think. So we have 14.6 science, and this basic avionics and probes, deep space avionics, is attractive to me. I mean, we could do with better solar panels, and of course there's the X-15 science. But what I'm aiming for here is we would like to be able to control our probe on its way to the moon. We're getting the lunar range communication. We'll get the tracking station upgrade. And hopefully that will all work out so that we can actually communicate with the moon. Right now, everything I plan in the VAB says that we can't communicate with the moon. And hopefully we can change that. But the avionics upgrade will be handy so that we can, can actually control the probe uh, without using one of the heavy units that are meant for launchers. So we will see. It doesn't give me any information right here, but hopefully that's the case. And then if we can do that, we can get the first lunar impactor, which seems to provide 15 science. And then with the 15 science, we can get the X-15 cockpit so that we can continue our X-plane research. So that's the plan. So anyway, we are going to complete the renovations to ELA-2. I'll start building our new rocket with the Gamma-2 stage. We have to get the engineers back to our pad here. Let me just see if we can do that via management here. 
We do have max engineers. We're not wasting anybody here. Well, okay, two engineers are just sitting around, but everyone else is on the on the job here. And this one will take 67 days, mostly to solar panels. <laughs> Oops. Mostly to solar panels take a lot of time. I haven't decided on what the look of it will be. I'll think about that. But anyway, we will build one of these. And we will unlock the Gamma 2, which is expensive, by the way. Our research pace is still very quick compared to how much time it takes us to get the science, so don't really feel go away. Uh, don't really feel like we need more scientists per se. Well, we have the breakthrough uh, UHF VHF polarization space television broadcasting crew science. But uh, yeah, so we've got the lunar range comms. Let's see if we can get the tracking. Oops, I wanted to right click on that. Okay, let's see if we can get the tracking station upgrade working. January 7th, 1987. So, well, better get started. So, we spent on that as well. I mean, we have to keep that in mind. Alright, first attempted launch of the Ariana rocket. Okay. Oh, let's start reading my thrall today. Alright, fair enough. Thrall up, SAS is on. And actually, we do want to launch at nighttime and boost so that we have our apoapsis on the daylight side. So let's actually do that instead. So now, throttle up, SAS is on, and ignition. Looks like we have four engines. Go! Well, we're past the speed of sound. Bloom has gotten some more vibrant colors. Okay, booster set. Interesting sep sound, but all right. Gamma two. Well, that's the question mark here. Well, one of the question marks. It says mean time before, between failures 20 minutes, though. Its ignition chance is 96.83%. Alright, uh, fairing set. The Gamma 2 burn will be about 2 minutes. Uh, we've got 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Its rated burn time is only 2 minutes 20, so we're pushing it. Okay, separation and ignition. And here it goes. Like little sparklers. Okay, well we have orbit on this stage. Maybe we should have aimed at the moon, but... Probably not. Not for power reasons anyway, not this time. Okay, let me cut the RCS thrust a little bit. Okay, spin up and go. We're already running the experiments. Oh, micrometeorite's already done. Well, down here it is. We'll have to see about space high. We don't want to go too high because we want as much transmission time as possible. It seems like we were short on transmission time. Oh, we've lost comms. Well, we're gonna go too high, I think. <laughs> Maybe we're going to have uh, exit trajectory, actually, unintentionally. Whoops. Uh, or maybe it'll just be the moon, I don't know. I didn't expect to lose comms here. Ah, oh, it's just short of uh, escape. It's just ridiculously high. <laughs> Almost escape. Okay, well, not what I intended, but could be interesting. Let's see how the power shakes up. 
So we'll see when we lose comms. About 18,000 kilometers there. But it's going to be a long time before it comes back. <laughs> uh, all I wanted was 15, darn it. How's the power? Power's okay. Let's check the degradation. Well, it's got 18% wear already, but that's not as bad as it used to be. This one just has bad orientation right now. Yeah, they, they each have 18% wear. After 8 days. I don't know if that's reasonable or not. It seems a little bit fast. We'll see how it goes from here as far as the wear is concerned. Oh, it went, it went on escape. Well, now it's never going to get comms again. <laughs> okay, we overdid it. We overdid it. Now, we, we certainly don't have any contract for this, but uh, maybe we have a... Uncrewed? No? Okay. Well, yeah, we're not going to get comms again. So we did not get enough science because it went too far. But successful test of the Gamma 2 anyway. Now for the Ariana 1, what we're really looking for is the Viking engines. And we will get that in the next technology here, 13 science for that. But also we would like a better sort of engine on the upper stage instead of the AJ-1027. And we're going to have to hunt for wherever they might put... I mean... Well, there's a one kill newton thruster, but that uh, I don't know if we're gonna get some nice MH and Mon 3 with that until we get crew stuff. Early docking procedures, maybe. So it'll be a bit. But yeah, we're looking for a low thrust, multiple restart engine at the top. And then, of course, the Viking engines. And then maybe we'll be in good shape. Okay, I still want to collect the extra signs so that we can unlock the next level of avionics. So what I've done is I've put a full-fledged probe core on this. And actually, I'm going to slide these down a little bit so that I can reach it. And uh, we've removed the bottom solar panels because we've got RCS there now. And that means, of course, that we have this near-Earth avionics uh, controls one ton, and we are, in fact, very close to one ton. And, yeah, we've got these ORM-65s to their best... Oh, they're not even their best variant. Ooh, we should do that. Okay, so we've got a whole bunch of them. And they should have two ignitions if we need that, but probably we don't. And as you can see here, it says we're consuming 0.91, but let's just check the comms. Pump that up. Okay, 109 watts because we've got the control core and that takes a lot. So it says perpetual, but depends on orientation. And of course, on the nighttime side, we're going to lose some. So it's got to be tight and there's probably got to be degradation. We don't expect this to work for very long, actually. Uh, so it's just sort of a test, and we really just want the science that we absolutely need in order to get the better probe cores. So that is the goal. And this time, because it doesn't have as much delta V, it definitely will not be exiting the Earth system. As far as better RCS, we pretty much need to wait until early docking procedures and in standardized docking procedures. So we've got a long time. Docking and crew transfer will give us hydrazine though. Well, we'll still have to make sure to keep an eye on comms. All those comm stations. You, well, I think we were just launched a little bit too low. And so we had a horizon problem. If we had been higher up on the previous launch, we would have done better. Polar Orbit is still still attractive. I mean, we pick up Bermuda pretty quickly. 
It's a little bit harder to get comms this way. But I think we'll still go equatorial this time. Okay, throttle up, SAS is on, ignition. And launch. Okay, pass the speed of sound. Alright, booster set. We can always come around and do the final burn with the upper stage engines, now that we have full control there. Oh, I should have released the fairings earlier. That's a little bit too high on the G-forces to be releasing those, but they cleared. Oh, well, we are higher. Okay. Gamma 2. Things are running. Yeah, the lines are getting a bit stretched here. Okay, well, we have an orbit. I think it might be good to leave it here for one orbit and come around and then fire our next stage. We probably want to dump the core though to reduce the power consumption. So we are going to jettison the Gamma 2 stage right now before we lose comms. And well, we're consuming uh, 110 watts, which was what we expected. Let's see what we get out here. Seems to be recharging. So that's according to plan. No comms right now though, so if it... But nowhere, which is nice. Nowhere on anything. We'll see after eight days, of course. But uh, we may not be recharging once we have comms, but it seems to be recharging at 30 watts. And our comms are only 20 watts, so we should recharge still. I mean, we could just do the low Earth orbit science. We'll see how that goes. I don't know if the next stage can boost us up to a high Earth orbit. I'm just seeing how much we recharge here. Okay, we're not going to fully recharge on this pass, so we probably want to be higher up. If we want to maintain charge, we want to spend more time up there. Wasn't too bad though. On this pass, we don't have many ground stations to work with, so we'll wait. This one's sort of on the side here. Okay, this time. I am going to try to light our upper stage once we pick up Amalek. Dial up and go. Let's see where we end up. Uh oh. It seems like we're not balanced. Uh oh. No. Wait a second. These do throttle, sort of. That's not good for the burn time, but it might give us time to spin. Okay, back up to full power here. Uh, okay, without the, RC, without the RCS trying to actively hold prograde, it's a little bit iffy. We're not going to get the high orbit signs, but... Um, nope, we don't really need you to... S well, we might want to stop spinning. We could probably orient north-south and get better results. Let's see, power... Let's just do one pass and see how the power goes. Oh, it's not even recharging this time. Well, it's sideways to the sun. 1% wear. It doesn't like spinning, I think. I'll be honest. I think the spinning is a problem. Well, right now our tail is to the sun. That's not great. 
You might have just enough to stop this. You got just gonna have a light spin like this. Hmm. Well, we're not fully recharging right now. I mean, obviously we'll lose charge on the nighttime side. I'm talking about here, we were supposed to be accumulating charge. Net net, but it's not. I mean, according to Kerbalism. So, well, we've got 14.8. Can we at least get our 15? Okay, we've gotten 15. And right there, we're at half of our electric charge. 4% um, wear after two days. So that tracks with the other one. If we extrapolate that out, it'd be 16% after eight days. That's not exactly what the VAB says, but I guess we have to ignore that. But anyway, we've got our science and I'll presumably continue to deliver it. I'm not going to pay any more attention to it. Let's go back to the Space Center. And I'm going to queue up the basic avionics and probes, finally, so that we get the deep space avionics. Research is going to take a little bit longer than I'd like. I would really like that all to get done about the time the tracking station gets done, so I'll hire some more scientists. And this is just so that we can plan our lunar probe with all the stuff laid out before us. So 264 scientists, engineers, we're still maxed out on the pad anyway. Gotta keep in mind that communication network thing. But hopefully all the stuff we're unlocking will help with that. Better solar panels would help too. We have done some tests to help us out with uh, the duration that we need to expect out of our comm network for their satisfaction and that'll help too the fact that we've done these tests all right so while we are upgrading mission control and the tracking station and doing the basic avionics and probes research i wanted to build something we aren't really building anything at all and we should be doing some sort of mission I wasn't satisfied with the idea of doing any of the contracts right now, so I thought up this. I had mentioned it before, but maybe we can do this uh, basic uh, film camera, early film camera, planetary photography thing with a drone plane. And so we have here a drone plane, and we're going to try this out. So there's a new one, it's got the jets and the rocket engine and we're going to try to get to a high altitude in order to take the planetary photography. If we take a look at our science, we see that at shores, uh, well, shores and over the water, we have 2.8 and 2.8. Now, we have to do that for 10 minutes, so we're probably not going to get all of it here because this can't fly that high for 10 minutes um, but at least we'll be able to get something and it'll be interesting to see if it works out so we'll see how far we can fly for how long we can fly above 40 kilometers with this and we don't really intend to land it safely uh, maybe I should put the parachutes back on maybe we'll just parachute it down we'll just expend all the fuel and try to parachute it down maybe so the parachutes are about 0.2 tons. I guess we'll go with them. Okay, fly-by-wire on, throttle up, and ignition. No contracts per se, we'll just get the film camera started. Oh, 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 we lost the rocket engine, that's no good. And the gear overstressed. Okay, uh, let's just return it. No good without the rocket engine. Okay. Okay. Also, you might want to shift the parachutes a little bit. Oh, we also don't need the air brake. We definitely don't need the air brake. Uh, well. It says integration 
154 days. That's longer than it took to build initially. Most of the cost is... Well, I mean, we added the parachutes after the fact. But... It's a little bit weird. Okay, well, it says... For Max Engineers, it's 53 days. But Max at the... Oh, now it's saying 81 days. Oh, well, it's all confusing. I'm wondering whether we, sh we can probably remove the tip tanks. Because we don't plan to land, <laughs> so maybe that'll be better. Okay, we will try once again. But it really is quite a lot of change, apparently. Uh, I just put the rocket engine back and refueled it. I, I Any movement of the parachutes seems to take a lot of effort. So we're going to get the tracking station done first. And so I, I think I'll put a, put a pause to this plan. We're going to finish the tracking station. And basic avionics and probes. And in the next video I'm going to plan out what we're going to do with all this stuff. Now that we've got everything lined up here. We've got four science. We'll try to get more science from the moon.